Today we'll be introducing the Ving Laser Engraver. The equipment needed to run this machine is the water chiller, air pump, blower motor, laser tube, general tools which are included, blower hose, and blower hose clamps. The machines sold in the US are 110 volt, 60 hertz compatible, making this machine implementable to most warehouse settings. First, let's connect the air pump to the back of the Ving engraver. The air pump itself does not have an on-off switch, so by plugging the pump into the machine gives you the flexibility to turn the pump on or off with the main power switch. The black air hose has been fitted with a piece of 4 inch long clear air tubing for direct connection to the air motor. The other end of the black air hose is inserted into the air fitting port located on the back of the machine as well. Next we will plug in the power cord for the blower motor into the back of the machine. Then we can attach the blower exhaust hose using the blower hose clamps and Phillips screwdriver. Take notice of the blower orientation and ensure that the blower exhaust hose is installed into the blower exhaust port. Next we will install the debris hose located inside the working area. This setup is responsible for removing small airborne particles and fumes from the workspace during operation. Now we can hook up the water chiller lines. The chiller has an inlet and an outlet that must be installed to the respective ports on the machine to prevent laser tube damage. Now we can plug in the power cables for the water chiller and v laser engraver. Be sure not to run any power cables on top of the blower, air pump, chiller, or blower hoses. The water chiller requires DI water prior to startup. Start with roughly 96 ounces of DI water and add additional water as necessary. It is highly recommended to use DI water to prolong the shelf life of the chiller and laser tube. Here we can see the plug-in configuration and two-pole breaker switch with reset and test buttons. Now we can connect the laser line to the back of the water chiller and be sure to run all lines under all blower hoses. Now let's look at the laser tube components. The 118 watt tube has a cathode, water inlet, back base, adjustment knob, tube tightening back clamp, water cooling channel, water outlet, front base adjustment knob, tube tightening front clamp, and anode. On the first of three reflecting mirrors, we see a circular inlet mounted to an adjustable base that contains five separate adjustment screws. Laser must be properly calibrated prior to use. Inside the working area, we find the remaining of two reflecting mirrors with the respective mirror adjustment screws. On the laser head, you will find the air exhaust lines to ensure a clean working surface environment. Once the machine has been set up and calibrated properly, we can now turn on the chiller. It is recommended for water temperatures to be below 35 degrees Celsius during operation. It's important to always ensure proper water circulation through the laser tube prior to machine use. If water is bubbling, try adding more water or ice to the water chiller. Always be sure to close the hatch prior to operation. For this video, we will be using the RDWorks software complementary with machine purchase. The supported vector file formats are DXF, AI, PLT, DST, DSB, and the accepted bitmap formats are BMP, JPEG, GIF, PNG. For this video, an imported DXF file generated in SOLIDWORKS 2016 will be used. 
Some basic computer requirements to run this software are Windows XP and above, a CPU 586, above P3 or P5, and a minimum of 1 GB RAM is recommended. Insert the software CD provided with the equipment and select the setup option. Select Yes, then Install, and be sure to track your install location. Select Yes, then Install, and be sure to track your install location. Once installed, open the application and import a DXF generated file using the import option in the file menu. The RDWorks software allows the user to create engravable files and adjust the machine specs like the cutting speed and power. For our demonstration, we have our laptop connected directly to the machine CPU via printer USB cable. The machine has a main power switch lower USB port, on-off power key, main control panel, top USB port, and emergency kill switch. This demonstration will engrave into a 44 inch by 15 inch by quarter inch wood side paneling. The Ving engraver has a 51 inch by 35 inch work table. Read over the list of materials and the required settings provided in the operating manual. It is recommended to keep a hard copy of the list in close vicinity to the machine for reference prior to use. The power and cutting speed must be adjusted to proper settings prior to operation. The RDWorks software allows you to print from the current position of the laser head or from predetermined origin. Once you have verified your starting origin and selected the proper speed and power settings, you can begin your engraving by selecting Start in the RDWorks software. Once your work is complete, be sure to turn off the main power key.